Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and I'm going to be working on one of my micro daily spreads. And I'm using Distress Oxide inks from Tim Holtz. I'll list the different colors that I used in the description box below. So I'm creating a background with the inks. This spread is actually based on a digital illustration that I did and it's available in my shop at scrapcraftastic.com. The digital illustration is set up as dashboards or covers for planners or traveler's notebooks. So here I used the purple color and I wanted to be careful because when it mixes with the orange you can see it turns brown so I didn't want to start getting that muddy look. Um, with the oxide inks you can go over with the color so that's why I'm going back over it with the orange just to kind of get rid of some of that brown look. This black is not an oxide ink. So, but it still works with the oxides and I'm just going around adding the color to the background. And here is my Cityscape washi tape that I'm going to be using. And I'm just taking my X-Acto and cutting out as much of the white as I can. And I'm just peeling up the city. So here I'm just taking a Tombow, it's an orange color and filling in some of the white areas that were left after I finished trimming. Here I see that the little white strip at the bottom of the cityscape is not going to uh, take the ink so I'm trimming that piece off as well because I want the bottom of that washi tape to blend in with the rest of my background so I'm removing that little strip and then I'm going to take the black ink and ink up the bottom area of the city to help it blend in and not just be a hard straight line. Okay, so now I'm going back with the orange Tombow just to make sure I hit those white areas. Adding a little more black to the top to make it more vibrant. Here I'm cutting down a piece of scrap cardstock. I'm going to cut it down to three by four, which is the size of the pages for the micro. So I just need a three by four piece and I'm going to take a pencil and draw a tree. Thank you. 
and I didn't want to do too much detail. I probably did more than I wanted to with this because I am going to then, after it's drawn, cut this out with an X-Acto knife. So it takes me a little bit to do that. But I also wanted this to be as close to the digital illustration as I could get it. So I'm just checking to make sure that our tree is going to fit like it should. This is a kneaded eraser. Uh, it's really an art supply. You can probably find it in the art supplies at Michael's. And I'm just taking that to erase the pencil marks. A kneaded eraser won't smudge your paper or tear your paper or mar your paper. So I really like those. Okay, so I'm just checking the placement again. Here is one of the pumpkins that is available in my shop. It's a printable. And I'm just going to cut the leaf off. And place it. And then I'm just checking the placement of this jack-o'-lantern before I glue down the tree. I'm using Barely Arts glue, and so far I really like this glue. It has a very fine needle type tip, and so far it seems to be holding well. And I'm wondering if maybe I should order some more. I don't know if this is one of those glues that they don't ship when it's cold. So it doesn't really get cold here in Florida, but it may be cold where the glue is coming from. Anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the tree. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel and press all the branches down. This helps press down the cardstock and pick up any glue seepage. I'm going to take the jack-o'-lanterns and place them in the scene on the page. And here I'm using Tombow markers to color in the offset around the pumpkin. There's like a, a white offset. This is something that you have a lot with planter stickers. I've somewhat stopped doing that when I print my stickers because when I wanna do things like this, then I don't have to worry about that white border. So I'm just trimming the extra pumpkin off of the page. And now I'm going in with another Tombow and adding the grass. And here I'm going to take some of the green ink and go in between the grass and try to help blend all of that in and make it look more like a full patch of grass. And here I'm just taking a little of the black ink and going over it just to give it a little more depth, make it a darker green. And I'm also taking the black around the edge to frame the edge. And I toyed around with the black jack-o'-lantern, but I don't like the way it looks, so I put it back. Here, I'm going to try and use this stamp just for the bats. I do have other bat stamps, but these were more of the right size that I needed. So I only put ink on certain bats, and I'm using the Distress ink, which I don't really like to use for stamping, but because I had an applicator for it, I thought that was the way to go. 
and you'll see it stamps lightly and I could have left them light like that but I'm gonna go over them with actually a gel pen this black gel pen has been coming in so handy with things like this doing touch-ups it works great and I have so much control it's better to me than trying to use a marker the gel pen works great and especially when I'm um, using it on washi tape because the gel doesn't dry instantly it allows me time to smear and make shadows when I'm using it on washi tape here I just cut a little slither of black cardstock and I'm going to use these stamps from the happy planner Here I did a test stamp because I know sometimes there's issues with the Happy Planner stamps. So now here I am stamping it on my actual coffee or tea stained paper. And I am of course have to fill in where the Happy Planner stamps, it just won't stamp. I think there's a flaw in some of the stamps. So because every time I stamp it, it misses the exact same spots. So here I'm just tearing my edges. I'm gonna turn this into a sign, but I want it to have a rustic look. And here I'm just inking the edges. I wanna make sure it has that rustic look. And just checking placement, getting my little slither that is holding up the sign and I'm gonna glue everything down. And I'm moving it over just a little bit to keep it away from the edge where I will be punching, so. Adding my glue to the top part of the sign and getting that placed and pressed down, getting up any extra glue and that's it. I'm gonna take the tape off of the back that's holding the two pieces together and use my arc punch to punch them, get them ready to go in the notebook. And here is the finished design. I wouldn't necessarily call it a spread. Maybe it's a spread, I don't know. But here's the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little gray bell so that you'll receive notification each time I upload a new video. Be sure to check the community tab and my stories for updates throughout the week. Also check us out over at patreon.com for exclusive content and digital downloads. Visit my other channel, Journal Life's Journey, for craft videos and junk journals. You can find me across social media at ScrapCraftTastic. Visit my website and shop at ScrapCraftTastic.com. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!